we're going to be playing the realm versus Promethean. So we got a little break for Voices of War, but they'll be playing again a little bit later. We are going to be playing on Promethean's home system, which is called Hot Sausage. It's a lava planet and a moon. I quite like this planet. Yeah, it's going to be a much smaller system than the last time. Six planets was a little, a little much to handle. There's a lot going on. Yeah, pretty difficult. I like the system though. I'm I'm quite Earth. a fan of uh, lava planets. So I like this lava planet as well. I th I think uh, we're gonna want to take a good long look at some of the commanders in this game when it first starts out. We've got one of the new ones from Burnt Custard. We've got Zyke and Merrick with some of the nice commanders. Headcrab from Promethean I think has a nice looking one. Um, Battle Bear too. A lot of custom commanders in here. We will check them out. Now the one burn custard is using looks really nice. So we're going to be sticking with Promethean in light blue. Realm will be in white. And Realm has everything to play for. They do if they win three of their four games today. They win Clan Wars Season 1. There Indeed. will be no way that anyone else can take it back. Just about ready to start. Who are you who are you going for in this game? Do you, do I, you think Realm? I think Realm is gonna want to try their best to come back from the last one. I think I mean I mean I'm sorry, I think Promethean is gonna try their best. Um, but I think Realm is gonna win this one. I think they've shown that they're one of the best teams. Hmm. Well let's take a look at Hot Sausage, the lava planet. Lots of uh, lava to ch make some choke points and some islands, but everything is basically connected. So it is actually one connected landmass. There's no islands. It is, and I've seen the starting zones on this planet. The starting areas are really large, and there are a lot of them. Mm. So the players could spawn in really anywhere. It's hard to predict. Yeah, which they're, they're really, against. really large circles. So you've got like a lot of options for where you actually want to spawn, which is a nice change. Uh, we see Realm trying to predict some of the Promethean spawns, though. And the moon is uh, nothing special. Just a little bit of a potato, not a huge amount of metal. Still, uh, I, still I certainly we'll amount to fight a for though. I think we'll see a fight for because you are going to need orbital no matter what, even for single planet games mm. with the new balance. So mm. once you've got orbital, it's worth going there. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really liking the terrain on this planet. It's just the the lava is really spread out. A lot of nice little choke points for walls. Can you see these pings coming out right now from Realm and Promethean? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're really close. To, they're well. I think a lot of what Realm is doing is trying to predict the different spawns. I think they might have memorized mm. the spawn areas. Mm -hmm. This is Promethean's home system. Custard tends to uh, do a lot of preparation for his games. I think. Yeah, I was just about to say that. I know he, he works them pretty hard as a team. But we've seen a payoff. Sometimes you can win just on preparation alone. If, you, if you've if you got a game plan and you stick to it, yeah. you can just make decisive calls. All the spawns coming in all at once. Some really close spawns here. Maybe they weren't trying to predict each other's spawns. Maybe they were just spawning at the same spot. Wow, that is a shock. Well, hello and welcome everybody to Clan Wars Season 1 as we have Promethean versus Realm and the action is going to kick off from the very beginning as we see a lot of players spawning right next to each other. And, uh, and we're going to focus on this blue player just here uh, from Promethean. A little bit slow getting up his factory but it is up now. He can see the uh, realm player right next to him, so he does know that he's right there. And then looking really over going for infernos from that player, that is an unusual move. I th do you think he's going for? He must be going for a rush, right? Well, he's going to have to be. The infernos aren't a bad choice, especially knowing as we're as we're seeing that the realm player is just walling up. But it it's just we've never seen this before. <laughs> These players starting so close to each other. 
Uh, we also see a 2v1 scenario uh, with a Realm player against two Promethean players. Just over here, I'll give you a little ping. Um, they're already getting up three bot factories and they're building boom bots from all of them. They're going straight in for the quick kill here and give them a nice early advantage. It's all about getting it as human, as fast as humanly possible. Yeah, the Realm player though has a really defensible position, but he's not going to be able to hold out against two Promethean players. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's lovely with all these blockages and he's got the walls up, he's using his Grenadiers already. I think he has the high ground here as well, slightly, uh, which gives him a bit of advantage. But against Boombots, they can kind of get around everything and uh, they're very hard to stop unless you've got a lot of units. Here we go, they're it, making a move. Commander's both moving in and uh, Boombots also making a big move in, coming in straight for the Commander. Ubercan is coming off. Oh, Commander down to 56%, but he's actually getting away. Grenadiers, Grenadiers also moving okay. forwards, and Commander's chasing him down. The Grenadiers are actually doing a lot of good work. Yeah, they're doing a lot of damage. Down to 50% for one 50, of those Commanders. Yeah. He's taking so much fire. He might have to retreat a little bit soon. I don't um, think so. The Grenadiers are all gone. Oh, uh, more Boombots coming in, yeah. and that signals the end. This is a very quick battle. Promethean played that well. Down he goes. So a very nice early win. Um, they've been slowed down a little bit there, but that is one commander down and one base down for Realm. And if they can start expanding quickly, they can get back on their feet. Looking over at the other player that's currently locked into battle, he's going for triple wall strats, still leaving it open for the quadruple wall a little bit later. Um, and he's been put under a little bit of pressure, raiding coming in from the south for him because there's two Realm players near to him. So he's going to be the one in trouble, and it's going to be hard for him to get up a teleporter at this stage because he's under so much pressure. Yeah, I think the quadruple wall strats is really a once in a lifetime experience. I don't yeah. expect to see that again. Oh yeah, we probably won't be able to see that. Boombot's coming in at that commander, ping's coming out from realm players, looks like they want to make in their move, and the Boombot's going to stay away for now. They don't quite have enough to make their move. And they want to clear out all the docks first. Yeah. Being really cautious, the Uber Cannon out. Spinning up, coming straight in for the commander, that's Battle Bear's commander, oh a lot of them went down on his commander, oh wow, that was a huge amount. Down to 16%, almost all of them managed to get through. Uh, bad news bears for him, and uh, Grenadier is now trying to protect him. Commander coming in from the north side as well. The commander is definitely enough at this stage to just chase him down and kill him. And Docs can also chase him down as well, so he's in a bad way. He's definitely going to have to go into a full-on retreat, um, and hopefully get some reinforcements from his teammates. Are there any reinforcements that can come? Not really. No, he's, he's in a bad spot. There are some boom butts just kind of floating around out in the open out there, maybe trying to get themselves in a nice position, but I don't think they really have a good opening. They're, they'll go in after the commander, but there aren't enough of them to kill the commander. Yeah, it's just not. Are they going to go for it? Uh, I'm oh, not yeah, sure why not? it's worth it. It'll be, uh, it's worth a try. Although the Uber Oh, the Uber Cannon! Getting a lot of nice kills. That's yeah. a really nice Uber Cannon. He still takes a decent bit. He's down to 68%. Um, and that commander going to go into full on retreat. He may actually get away here. Let's look at the last uh, Promethean player I haven't really focused on. He's got a deep space radar and he's going for an orbital launch now. He hasn't really been attacked. For some reason there's mechs next to his base that he still hasn't built. He could definitely be doing... Uh, a lot of building because he hasn't been attacked. He's also doing some raiding now, which will give them some nice wins. Yeah. Eco looking even on the teams at both round 250 medal. Yeah, uh, Realm has quite a lot more fabricators, although I, I don't know at this stage in the game if that's really all that useful because the, the fighting is so close and you just you need every combat unit you can get. Uh, Realm has already made it onto Buns. They are on the moon. A commander has been landed from an Astraeus. They've also got a Archid radar there. So good work from them. Uh, managing to get on that moon nice and early and giving them that little advantage. I think that's a strong moon. Uh, strong move. They're going to want to lock that down with bombers as fast as they can. Yeah. But the T2 fight is much easier to invade now. Yeah, I think it'll be a while before we see any T2 coming up, especially Realm just saw the last game. They saw how long it took Promethean to get T2. I don't think they're that worried about it. Uh, interestingly here, we see Realm moving an orbital fabric straight towards one of the Promethean bases, the one that was 2v1ing earlier. Um, perhaps they're going to go for some anchor builds, I guess? Yeah, it's been spotted though. The umbrella's already going up. Yeah, it's already going up. Uh, I think at this stage, you know, you'd expect a deep space radar. You're never going to be able to pull off a sneaky uh, orbital turret build. There's a lot of really tight, small little fights going on. A lot of grenadiers trying to shoot around obstructions. Mm. The Promethean player that was in a 1v1 is in a lot of trouble with the grenadiers coming in now. Yeah, he needs to be careful. Uh, 
third air factory going up bomber on the move. could be coming in against that commander too. Oh, yeah, depending that's if they think enough. they need the bombers or if they want to just go in with the grenadiers. They are going for the snipe. This will be good. Yeah. And another commander down. I think they could have used the units, but they just wanted to get in there and finish it. And now they got the units there just to to do clean up. A couple of units coming in at this base actually. We see two coming in. Uh, one from the north, one from the left hand side. And they're coming yeah, the. In. That second group should be able to kill at least three mechs if they if they can get their act together, but they're just Bomber's kinda slowly wandering around. Bombers coming in, probably gonna try and raid them a little bit. Ooh, nice little bombs coming off. Just need to clear up the rest of those units. And uh, still looking even on the eco, three thirty to three hundred in favour of realm, so really not too much to it at the moment. Yeah, do you think Promethean forgot about air early game here? Yeah, I, I see them. I see they've got some air up now, but yeah. they they really weren't doing a lot in the way of air, and it's starting to hurt them. Not much, but we're seeing a lot of grenadiers now. This is something we definitely certainly didn't see in uh, in the other patches, but they seem to have been favoured quite a bit, certainly by the Promethean players. Yeah, just some subtle changes to the grenadiers. They're a little cheaper now, and their range was increased by just I think ten meters, maybe fifteen. I forget, mm. but it's enough. Especially mm. with the cheap combat fabricators that can just throw down walls whenever they get in the fight. Nice bombers over, uh, from Realm quickly took out combat fabricators before moving on to deal with the rest of the army. Yeah, Promethean seems in trouble. Looking over the army tab, we have 360 forces for Realm, 260 for Promethean. 30 fabbers for Realm compared to 11 for Promethean as well. So the moment the unit advantage definitely seems to be in favor of the Realm. Promethean, though, on the offensive in one little base, uh, I just pinged it, I don't know if you saw it, but um, they can't really move in just yet because there are a lot of little single barrel laser turrets, but they've killed a little metal, they've done a lot of raiding, killed some units. Yeah, it'd be nice to get rid of this little production base, desperately trying to get up some defenses for Realm. Units moving in, Grenadiers coming in, single laser turret does get finished. I'm going to slowly take out those Grenadiers, oh no, that single laser turret. Wow, it's going to destroy every one of those little raiding group. All because they're flying. On the moon, though, Realm, Realm was not able to lock down the moon with bombers, and Promethean is about to make them pay for it. Oh, wow. That happened quick. They got their teleporters through, sent their units through. Uh, worldwide patrols, they're going to come in here, do raiding on all the unprotected mechs which have been built. And uh, now we've definitely got a fight going on on the moon. Um, and Realm here going to get up a whole load of vehicle factories. This is the sort of time where you need a whole load of production there. Six vehicle factories is a good number. Production also going up from Promethean as well. Going to need to send some reinforcements through in the teleporter. Because we're in a bit of trouble now. Too much production from Realm. Yeah, Promethean really can't afford to lose this moon. They're going to probably put a lot of, of uh, work into it. Yeah, if anything they could try turtling kind of hard on Hot Sausage. Um, and actually putting all their effort into trying to win the moon, because if they win the moon then uh, they'll be in a much better shape to try and hold on to the lava planet. Uh, good raiding coming in from Promethean at the moment actually, on the lava planet. Going to raid four mechs up there and putting in raiding forces towards that proxy base which was built earlier. Yeah, Promethean, they, they sort of started out in a weak position because Realm had three commanders really close to each other and they've taken over a, a large section of the lava planet but Hermithian has done a really good job just raiding everywhere realm isn't mm. you know they don't really want to get into any any big real confrontations because they don't it's sort of like in their their last game with um, forces of war they don't think they can win the serious battles but if they just keep picking away at them everywhere that they see an opening they can get back in this game yeah there's still some mechs to be fought over but it's difficult for Promethean, they currently trail 280 metal to 600, so not in great shape. They do have their T2 up, it was pinged by Realm, so they have seen it. And, the fight and Realm, Realm was initially surprised on the moon, but it looks like they've been able to figure out what's going on and just start to put together a response. Look at the army tab, what have we got on units? 700 to 300, so a big unit advantage still for Realm as well. 
guess the one thing is they haven't seeded completely all of the map control on both planets um, even though they do have much less eco they're about to lose quite a lot more eco too realm has a nice attack coming in Yeah, that's a nasty force of units coming in around the back of that blue player's base. Base, he hasn't been attacked a lot during this game, so it's unfortunate for him to have this happening now. And those units are going to come through. Yeah, and there's just wait. nothing he's got, really. This this probably spells the beginning of the end for Prometheum. Yeah, it looks like Realm is going to split those up and take out just all six of those metal extractors, as long as they time it out right. Yeah, so sort of like the last game, we see Promethean refusing to give up, fighting every inch of the way, but just consistently behind on the economy game. I definitely think they should. Uh, there's always a chance to get some uh, some crazy comebacks from some situations that look pretty dire. Oh, of course, and and just like last time, we see them really doing a good job of forcing their opponent to fight for every inch they take. Mm. Got to be careful, they have a lot of docks on the lava planet right now, and they're going to get some tanks coming in them, which can be a bit of a pain to deal with. Oh, Boombot's coming in on the moon, and they're going straight for the teleport. I guess they want to get rid of that and not going to go for the commander. Teleport has been activated on the moon, it's now going to get shot down by docks. Just yeah, as they got some the reinforcements that coming commander's in. in trouble now. Yeah. Great Uber Cannon comes out there. This unit's going to have to retreat and regroup. There are so many units from Realm on the moon right now. They have pushed Prometheum off really heavily. And uh, and this now means that, that Realm can concentrate on the lava planet and just, just end it once and for all. Yeah, I believe in the lobby before the game started, Merid said the Shadow Damon Commander is his. So that would be Merid on the moon controlling Realm's forces up there. And he is an experienced orbital player, so I think he'll be able to lock that planet down once they kill off that commander. Uh, I'm I'm a little disappointed that Promethean isn't putting up more walls. I think uh, yeah. on the lava planet where they have those two commanders in one base, if they want to hold out as long as possible, they're going to need to get up more grenadiers, more walls, and just defend. But really, 800 metal to 223, they're really going to have to be looking for not just one snipe, but three snipes. Yeah, and losing their foothold on the moon is uh, is now complete as so they lose that commander. I'm not even sure where they can really get some, uh, some snipes off. They do have two bases left on the lava planet. One big double base with two commanders. And one little small yeah, base here. Realm, if you notice, they've done a good job of surrounding the Promethean double base with just three Avengers just around the edges, but it should be able to keep any orbital fabricators from coming out or really just keep them pinned down on every layer. Mm. Ping's coming out. Teleporter's being pinged for reinforcements to send into the desert planet. Of course, we can now have all the units from the moon. We can just go straight through teleporters and, and finish them off on the lava planet. A lot of production was built there in uh, in response to that invasion. Realm has been slowly growing their air force over the entire game, and they're just sitting around building it up, and the GGs get called. And they don't need to go in for this night. It looks like the commanders are probably about to delete. Yep. Yeah. Looks like they will concede uh, as they are behind. And unfortunately, uh, they lose that game. Promethean lose two of their games there. Realm get one of their three games that they need uh, out of their four games they're going to play today. So they can take the Clan Wars Championship. But we will see whether they can get those wins. That was this game. We'll be back with some more very shortly. Yeah, I think everybody's going to be watching Realm really closely. They need to win just two out of their additional three games in order to win this Clinton Wars Season 1. Everything to fight for.